It's time to change eras. Speak now, Taylor's version. You were very good to us. I personally loved all the folk songs so much, but welcome to 1989 Taylor's version, everyone. At midnight tonight, today is October 26th, we are entering Taylor's version of 1989. I have my 1989 friendship bracelets ready to give out at Target in the morning. I've made myself a shirt and I'm very, very excited. In this video, I'd like to cover some of my predictions, my thoughts on the Volt songs, and just get it out there in the world in case I happen to be right. Or if I'm wrong, I would love to go back and compare and contrast what my expectations were. Either way, Taylor said that this Bolt is insane. So let's go through it. I think my favorite song is going to be Suburban Legends. It just sounds like one of those Taylor songs that has a bunch of details in it. It's super relatable. She has a lot of metaphors that describe everyday common emotions and happenstances that somehow Taylor Swift, the biggest pop star in the world, and all of us all experience so it just feels like it's going to be relatable similar to all too well maybe i think that the song suburban legends is going to be taking a perspective switch i'm actually going to take off these bracelets because they're a little loud i'm just so excited uh anyway suburban legends i think it's going to take the perspective of someone in the suburbs <laughs> groundbreaking i know but if you think about 1989 think about taylor at that time she was super popular taylor said that she felt like she was on the verge of being overexposed during that time period she had hardly any privacy she was everywhere i personally think that um that's the ideal circumstance i would like everything to revolve around taylor swift <laughs> maybe she's going to take this song and spin it from someone that's not in the spotlight that's sitting outside of the city wishing that they were moving to new york like she is the suburban legend that people that want to get out of their hometown and start living life and having independence and meeting free people and staying up all night that it's gonna be from the perspective stuck in the suburbs wanting to live the life that Taylor Swift was living during this time when she moved to New York. She was living the dream and being legendary. Or <laughs> I think it could be the complete opposite where she thought she wanted to be in the big city. She became a suburban legend and now that she has it, maybe she starts to appreciate the suburbs, the quiet life. And that's when maybe she goes to the beach to step away for a moment. I think she could contrast the city life to the suburb life and talk about the positives of both, needing both. I don't know, just my thoughts, but I think that's gonna be my favorite. Next, let's talk about Say Don't Go. I haven't thought about this one that much. I think that the obvious prediction would be that it's similar to Stay, 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 where you don't want someone to leave you you want them to say don't go so this could be what the lyrics she hinted at were in her story i'll put those on the screen this could be the beginning of a breakup where you're starting to be on the rocks and you want the person to reassure you similar to what we see in cornelia street where she's used to things going south and somebody just leaving but then in that example they came back but in this breakup song, in my prediction, Say Don't Go, she wants her romantic partner to say, don't go, but I don't think that they do. It could also be a happy song. It could be the beginning of a relationship where you are trying to keep things casual, everything's fine, but like, stay. I want you to tell me that you want to keep spending time together. You know, you don't want the, the date to end. That could also fit the description of the lyrics. They're having a good date. There's a restaurant involved, there's a smile, and maybe you're not sure if there's gonna be a second date or not. I don't know. Moving on 
to Now That We Don't Talk. I think that this is going to be about a friendship breakup. We had the squad going on. We had her exploring what she wanted in a friend. At first it was just the popular feeling, the endorphins of being accepted by the cool group, get all the friends that you can. Media ridiculed her for dating too much. Uh, so she said, I'm gonna be single. And she really focused on her friendships. And a lot of those friendships are no longer a thing. And some have been mended, like Taylor Swift and Katy Perry. Maybe this is going to go into her having doubts about the quality of her friendship groups. And now that they don't talk, what is she going to do? Is she going to reinvent herself in a new way or go quiet like she did? So that's my prediction for that song. Moving on to slut. I heard YouTube doesn't like us saying that word. So if you could like the video or consider subscribing so that it uh, keeps this video out there for, for everyone, that'd be awesome. I'd appreciate it. I think, and this is my favorite prediction that I have because I have not read this anywhere. Not saying that nobody has thought of this, but I personally have not read it anywhere. So in my head, I came up with it myself. Um, and I think I could be right, so I'm probably not, but I would love for this to be true. I think that the song Slut is going to be about the media, obviously. I don't think that Taylor is the slut in this case. The media was making her out to be one. All they focused on was her dating life. They acted like she dated so many people that she couldn't keep a man she's always the problem i'm seeing it today on social media where people are like why can't she just admit that she's the problem and it's like you obviously have not done your research anyway i think she's going to be reversing the tables and similar to blank space where she took what the media was portraying her to be and caricaturized it and exaggerated it I think that she's going to call the media a slut. They are the ones that are hungry for attention. They are the ones that will do anything, go against all ethics, are desperate for any Taylor Swift news. Talk about clickbait, paparazzi. This is the era where she was just doing everything she could to get away from the pictures um, because they were swarming her and they were a slut for anything Taylor Swift. This is going to be saying, thanks for calling me a slut media while well, you are the true slut in this circumstance. That's my prediction. Now for, is it over now? I think this is going to be about her popularity. She always seems to feel like every success that she has is her last chance at success. And on one hand, that keeps her humble and down to earth and appreciative, which we all love about her. On the other hand, we're like, girl, you're going to be a legend for the rest of your life. You are an icon. We are hungry for everything you do. You can do no wrong. Um, at least that's how I feel. <laughs> so I feel like maybe after not winning a Grammy for Red meant that her career was over. She believed in 1989. She believed in being able to put out a pop album, but at the same time was having doubts and fears that it wasn't going to work, that she wasn't going to be accepted into this new genre. Thankfully, it was a success, but that's my prediction. Is It Over Now is going to be about her career, her fame, her popularity, and the sad thing is, is she felt like it was over during 1989. She just went, um, peaked at the popularity, and then disappeared from the spotlight for a while, which reminds me I think that Slut is going to be the music video and single of this Vault track list, but she hasn't talked about it at all. Taylor, is there going to be a music video? We need to know. <laughs> what if it's just like hours away at this point? What if, oh my gosh, I haven't even checked social media in like the past couple hours. She could be like, anything is game right now. Anything is game. I in my bones, like my whole body, I know that she's going to come out with some features and collaborations because 
if you think about the tour, she always brought out special guests and it was always a surprise. She would surprise us with people and I think she's gonna be doing that with this. I think she's going to be announcing the slap music video and then she's going to be like, ha ha ha, here are some of those songs with special guests. And I think that Harry Styles is one of them. I don't, I don't know who else it would be. Maybe Selena Gomez, that would be freaking huge. The Bad Blood music video having so many famous people, like there has to be something that she deserves to have. 1989 be hers. This is what she owns. This is her music. She has her version. I think she's gonna have like a squad version. And it's just gonna, oh, I don't know. I've seen lots, there's lots of theories out there. You've seen the videos, you've seen the TikToks. We're seeing these, these teased lyrics and it's looking like Harry's handwriting. I don't personally think that the vaults have features on them, but I think there could be a version of them with a feature. She can do whatever she wants. So like, I don't know, but it's, I, I, like to think of myself as a sensible Swifty. I've been around for a long time. I like to limit my clownery to a healthy amount. I think that there's definitely some big tricks up her sleeve and I think it's going to be a very short-lived era. I think we're getting rep pretty soon in the next few months. Uh, I'm thinking February is when it's going to be released. It's just the math that we see. <laughs> I think 1989 is going to blow us away and she's going to give us a lot of uh, great things with this. So, man, those are my predictions. I can't believe it's here. I have some really fun plans for it. So every time new Taylor music comes out, I take my happy self, my happy introverted self, in my car and I drive to Target as soon as it opens <laughs> and I put it in my CD player and I listen to it. I'm going to listen to it straight through because I need that welcome to New York energy. I, um, I'm going to record my reactions. I'm not great at reacting on camera, but if you'd like to see it, let me know. I have my Speak Now reaction, Speak Now Taylor's version, and it's literally like <laughs> I had gotten home from Target when Never Grow Up came on. I was crying, just tears, just tears streaming and that had never been a song that touched me like that before tears i come in and my boyfriend was like are you okay and i'm like no and then long live hit and my reaction is just this <laughs> sobbing with my head down so i don't know i don't know if it's something that the public wants to see but let me know if you're interested anyway my friend is coming over we're gonna have a girl's day i've never celebrated a taylor swift release with other people before what better time to start than 1989 the era of friendships we're gonna get ready i have my outfit plans we're gonna make friendship bracelets we're gonna do fun things i don't know what and then we're gonna go see Taylor Swift's Eras tour film at a drive-in movie theater. I feel like it's gonna feel retro, but cool. Thanks for joining. Thanks for listening to my predictions. What are your predictions? We are down to the wire. It is Thursday at five o'clock my time. So like, I'm not gonna, I have self-control when it comes to not ruining a surprise for myself. So I'm going to be not on social media tonight. <sighs> It's a struggle. It's a struggle because what if she announces things? That's the problem with my my habits that I have. Um, I'm probably going to stay on social media until bedtime. And then in the morning, I'm going to go straight to Target. That's the plan. I don't want to have spoilers. I know we know the album, but the vault tracks and the possible collaborations, there's spoilers that can happen. I just want to be in control of it, you know? Of when I'm exposed to the excitement. Anyway, thanks for joining. Thanks for listening. Please tell me if you disagree with my predictions, if you have different ones, um, let me know. Bye.